Hello friends, welcome you once again. And I'm really happy to be able to be a presenter this time. And I'd like to make my speech maybe a bit less technical and talk more about vision. But I do believe it's really like extremely sensitive topic because we have to know for sure where we are moving. We have to know for sure where industry is moving. So I would like to talk with you a bit about uh, Salesforce industry forecast for next year, key trends and challenges. So to make sure that we are still successful uh, within this uh, journey with the Salesforce, we're really grateful. So like a couple of words about myself. So my name is Mihailo. I'm a head of Salesforce practice and customer times. I spent almost 15 years with multiple CRM solutions. Uh, initially, I got economics degree, so it gave me some sort of understanding both business side and the technical side. So I spent five years as a project manager, three years as a product owner, worked in really multiple industries and had chance to work in great companies and had chance to be part of the digital transformation journey. So that is why I really believe I have I have something to share with you in this regards, especially seeing what's going on in the industry this year and like trying to predict and analyze what's gonna happen next year. So like for me it's really critical uh, to build possibility and to build uh, direct links between what's going on with markets and what's going on with technologies. Because these two areas are extremely connected and like they're definitely moving together. So to try to build the same links and the same possibility for you, uh, I would like start my speech with short uh, ideas and a short introduction of what's going on with an industry itself. So like, first of all, uh, like key background for the next year is, is expectations because modern economy fully build on expectations and uh, all markets behavior are driven by expectations. So what's the expectation for the next year on the most of markets? Like, first of all, global forecast. Global forecast for the next year is, I wouldn't say extremely optimistic. Yeah, like mo most probably in most of markets going to be flat or maybe even some recession. What does it mean for businesses? It means that businesses immediately start thinking about their changes, about their challenges, and how to be successful on those markets which are like flat or going down. And it means that most of companies with whom all of us working today, yeah, uh, most of them gonna be smart next year. Most of them gonna spend, but spend smart. And I would say, like usually, uh, during such complicated years, markets and companies try to open new channels. They try to find new opportunities, how to sell, how to promote, how to do it with less budget and more effective. So it means that pretty often it leads to changes of budget holders inside of big organizations. Because when you have to just sell more and when you have just to improve your sales departments, it means like budget owners would be around sales departments in IT. But when you have to open new channels, when you have to find new opportunities, uh, when you have to try to change the way of working, it's pretty often lead that budget holders 
uh, for the uh, for the next year will be marketing departments in most of huge enterprise companies. And of course, like it's a bit another way of thinking. And it means for us as an IT, a bit new challenges. And I would say like at the final statement that this leads us to another step in the new way of industrialization, uh, which is usually called industry for zero. So what does it mean? Just just a couple of words. So first, first of all, uh, like our history, so a couple of industrial revolutions. Yeah, the first one was around uh, mechanization, streaming power. Yeah, the second one, when we, as a civilization, we were able to start mass production. Yeah, like the third one was about automations, computers, and electronics. And right now, we are in the border of fourth industrial revolution which is cyber revolution uh, and it means that we should change the way of working we should be uh, more selective we should all production will be personalized yeah or at least moving into the direction of personalization and right now there is almost no borders between customers and manufacturers or like producers of any goods and values. So living in the world without these borders, living in the world without huge amount of information, that's basically mean this industry for zero when each company has almost direct connection to their customers. But at the same time, it means that customers are fully overwhelmed with uh, with information because like it's lead us to the reality of some sort of informational storm and within this approach yeah uh, we should uh, help businesses to be unique help businesses to target their customer and to have this effective channel of communication so this is like overall trend it was last year I would say in the last couple of years, but now when most of markets really expect some recession, uh, these trends would be just much stronger. Moreover, as I mentioned on previous slide, like holders of the budget will be marketing departments. So that is why I, I tried to build this like traceability and linkage for you. So. I, I really believe it helps uh, to understand your customers better, to understand the industry better, and understand how to behave. So, like, as I mentioned, Industry 4.0, it's totally new way of working. And it means that uh, businesses would require much more comprehensive and complex solutions. So I would say that as some sort of slogan, it is not a software anymore. It should be a solution, and solution really complex. Uh, so, what does it mean for us? It means that we are moving from approach working in the classic CRM environment uh, to approach working in complete uh, industrial solutions. Uh, architecturally, we are looking into Salesforce ecosystem. It means that those, let's say, classic CRM, right now I would say that it is like a background for the new uh, industrial solutions. So this classic CRM, usually what we saw consists of uh, sales cloud, yeah, the key driven uh, for sales organization, service cloud to make sure that our post sales services on a good level, yeah, experience cloud, just to connect all uh, partners within its communities to build this, uh, let's say, holistic uh, ecosystem around the organization and revenue cloud to, to drive offering, to drive order and take 
process. And I would say that overly in this classical CRM approach, key focus on, of the business was on order to cash process. Yeah, so how to attract customers is a bit classic way of working, yeah. And how to then like generate as much revenue as possible uh, from the customer. But now when we are moving into industrial solution on top of classic CRM, yeah, we have to build a complete ethical system to work with data we generated in the past, yeah, to work with new channels. And it means that those companies who are successfully implemented this background of CRM now would be ready to make next step. And we, if their partners, should also be ready to help them to make this next step. And what does this next step mean? It means that like we should build some CDP capabilities to make sure that uh, all data collected from different uh, sources, yeah, it's stored properly, it's harmonized, and like the quality of this customer data on a decent level, yeah. Then we should have marketing cloud on top to help us communicate with the customers through multiple channels, to help us uh, build this like really customer journey, which is not like just a marketing words anymore. Yeah, we really should manage this journey. Otherwise, within those reality of uh, InfoStorm, yeah, the company will lose their customers. And of course, at a new sale channel, like more and more uh, popular will be different types of B2B and B2C commerce solutions. Because like the classical way of working, uh, I would say year by, by year, lose its attractiveness because it is pretty expensive to invest in a lot of sales team. Yeah, it is much better to build this uh, strong capabilities of uh, e-commerce and start uh, generate value yeah, and start generate uh, income through this. And to make sure that all your data sources are uh, connected and that your solution is really leverage from this data. Yeah, the, the Salesforce just recently announced like the new platform, the Genie, to to connect all this story. So to connect your build solution and engine with multiple data sources. And this is like the new look and feel of CRM solution. Yeah, it's not classic one anymore and we should be prepared. We should prepare ourselves for this. Uh, and since we are talking about really like huge solution, not just some pieces. Yeah, I would say this solution will consist of three major pillars. Yeah, it's like engage your customer, monetize, monetize your data and keep your customer loyal. So building these three major pillars in your solution really helps uh, to drive the business. Because like all this capability around customer engagement helps you attract as much as possible. Then knowing like your previous data and collecting new data, yeah, you should be as effective as possible with this attract customers. And by doing this, you're monetizing them and you are keeping them loyal. It means that all these connections should be almost in real time. You cannot uh, build this solution uh, if it is not real time data, if it is not uh, really data driven. To make it possible, I would say that the best option is to have this solution in a like common ecosystem because to build all these integrations 
e if solution is from multiple ecosystem, it is complicated. It is definitely increased cost of value of the implementations. It increased cost of ownership, increased time to market. So it means like that's not the best option. Really, the best option is to build it based on unified ecosystem. And it leads us to the next statement that now it is battle uh, on this competitive market, not just between uh, multiple uh, CRM software. No, it is competition of ecosystems. And those ecosystems that are stronger will win this competition. Yeah, it is not a secret that like Microsoft ecosystem were pretty strong due to Azure, due to all these capabilities could be built on top of Azure. Uh, it become more and more com complicated to Salesforce to compete. And that is why on this screen, which is described existing key sales force ecosystem offering. Yeah, just, I guess, uh, behind my head, uh, you'll see this highlighted genie. I would say this is answer of Salesforce to, to this competitive environment because it was like missing stone of the ecosystem. And right now it helps to build like full circle of the solution within Salesforce. Like, what does it mean? What What is this offering uh, from Salesforce? Like, answer to the challenges, yeah? Uh, and I just tried to put these nine major pillars of the solution, which is really part of uh, most of every enterprise engagement. Um, even right now, like next year, it will be just this trend will be stronger and stronger. So within this offering from Salesforce ecosystem, we have marketing monitoring, yeah? And we have like customers monitoring using marketing cloud tools. It needs us, yeah, those first pillar of engagement to build this initial engagement of the customer. Like then when we start capturing these customers from uh, from the competitive environment. Yeah, we should uh, be smart enough and within such volume of data, it's impossible to, to be smart enough by just some human decisions. Yeah, so the next step uh, in this offering here yeah, within this ecosystem is different types of next best activities, next best op offers, yeah, uh, provided by Einstein prediction engine. So I would say it's almost nowadays, it's almost must in every complete solution. Then based on this best offer to the customer, yeah, uh, we should give options uh, to act through multiple channels. Yeah, so as a result, all this omni-channel and e-commerce tools, again, within Salesforce ecosystem, give uh, cap capability, provide us this capability to uh, monetize these best offers, uh, like directly monetize within the customers. But we have to make sure that customer like really pass this journey and like, Ideally, not even once. Yeah. So then, since we attracted customer uh, to iterate with us, so like multiple digital channels, commerce channels, we should really build again help, with help of marketing cloud capabilities. It's customer journey. Yeah. To to make sure that like the order to cash process for, 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 for our already captured customers is less painful, is as fast as possible, because again, coming back to, to previous slides, we are living in uh, extremely uh, fast moving world and fast moving environment. Then when we capture this order, yeah, we have to make sure 
that everything immediately uh, without any styluses, which is a huge headache of existing enterprise with styluses. Okay, we have to make sure that everything we capture uh, and everything we are driving through customer journey are really immediately distributed through multiple departments inside of an organization. And for this, uh, again, Salesforce gives us a lot of capabilities of building flows, workflows on top, uh, using different integrations approach. So building multiple apps inside of one solution. So Salesforce provides us with these capabilities to break the silos and to share information inside of the organization immediately. And like, why we have to do this? What is the next logical step? The next logical step is to manage customer attention. So by making customer experience really uh, easy going with our organization and effective helps to like good uh, offers, we, we can expect that customers uh, are staying with us, yeah? And this is, let's say, full cycle of making sure we attract customer, give a uh, unique and best offer, yeah? Give multiple channels, build journey, and retain the customer with us. So this is those full cycle. I would say this is those principles of modern solutions uh, we should propose to our customers, I mean, to, to the businesses. Uh, and for them, it's really critical nowadays to be successful. And on the right side of the screen, uh, I put those, let's say, technical capabilities from Salesforce to make this story real. Yeah, and this is a full range of uh, DevOps tools and CI CD tools. Of course, mainly it's, it is the EIC, but also like pretty often you can see Capara and, and another solution. Of course, like to make this story real, Salesforce had to provide really strong uh, integration capabilities, you know, like sense to new stuff. Uh, it, it, it is possible. And which I mentioned, a couple minutes ago, those missing stone in the past, which now is available in the ecosystem, this genie, just like to make sure that all those capabilities work properly, like data is really fuel to this solution. And to make this stream uh, continuous, like to provide a solution with, with necessary fuel, which is data, the genie helps to build it. It helps to build direct uh, relationship between your CRM solution and multiple data sources. It means, and I would really highlight this as a great capability, you are able to use data which are stored, for example, in, in Snowflake, yeah, you now can use this data to build uh, triggers. To use, you can use this data to build flows, workflows. So, like, you really still value of those data you you collected and stored without extra headache with integrations and without extra headache of moving this data from data storage to, let's say, Salesforce solution. Now you have to do this. Right, you have Genie, which help you to build this uh, to build this journey. So this is like once again, full Salesforce ecosystem offering uh, to existing market challenges to this existing industrial challenges. Salesforce really feel perfectly uh, this like request from the markets and. I would say just in time provided markets with necessary capabilities to build complete solutions to the businesses. And of course, like uh, next logical step is to understand which industries next year uh, really uh, like would be active 
even in case of recession like this industry said the derivative which industry will consume these capabilities and as a result uh, for us it's critical to know what exact solutions expected within those industries because like previously i described just capabilities in general here yeah, now let's try to decompose these capabilities to existing process within a couple of most industries uh, to make sure uh, we are like planning our self-development and self-learning for next year in proper way and within proper industries because to do it nowadays without industrial background without really understanding needs of each particular industry would be extremely difficult so we have to build these capabilities inside of ourselves yeah we have to grow the skills inside of ourselves so the first industry i would like to highlight today and uh, i would say that next year we expect that this would be one of the most active industry within uh, uh, like considered around the Salesforce ecosystem, this is uh, lifetime. And uh, like, of course, previous COVID years made huge push to the industry. And uh, like, I, I guess all of us remember those challenge when we, when we wait, like, would it take half year or year uh, to, create vaccine and like the biggest challenge was not just to create it but to, to launch it on markets and like this solution and the game complete using all those salesforce capabilities we use this solution to to create this journey uh we call it like molecular to market journey uh would be extremely needed and uh, we, we really expect a lot of activities here. Uh, so how to build this molecular to market journey within Salesforce capabilities? Uh, what major uh, pieces of the solution inside? Uh, and I would say uh, like there are four major parts of the solution. Like first of all, preclinical. Yeah, we have to automate as much as possible all activities that are inside of any R&D lab uh, just to make them possible to discover data uh, as fast as possible, to work with data in really easy and smart way and to prepare those uh, developments they are doing to real uh, trial uh to real trial activities so like salesforce give us and in this particular point really thanks to genie salesforce give us new range of capabilities how to build this preclinical study yeah how to analyze the analyze data uh within a marketing cloud data ram or genie connecting multiple sources and the same time capture because it's really necessary from the regulations point of view capture all this data uh, in the system and make this preclinical preparation yeah the next step of this journey uh is clinical trials yeah we have to engage i guess you really should remember this story since covid times when when we read that it should be like uh, 900 people uh, tested or uh i mean 900,000 here or like 80,000 so so like multiple numbers but all of those numbers are pretty pretty huge and within this clinical trial you have to engage these people you have to build uh really like endless communication points with them to capture all effects of these clinical trials this should be smooth, robust, and easygoing process for every um, engaged uh, person for the trial. And here, to make this happen, 
yes, Salesforce, uh, like considering those capabilities we discussed uh, previously, yes, Salesforce give us uh, communities to build these interactions. Yes, Salesforce give us health cloud at the background for all patient data and for all patient activities. Yeah, and of course, marketing cloud to build this interaction. Uh, then since uh, or when clinical trials is completed, the next step is to launch it to the market. Yeah, to make it happen, we need to build those, we discussed multi-channel capabilities. We have to build this uh, customer journey. It's not trial anymore, yeah, it's real customers. And then we have to build the journey, we have to monitor uh results uh, to have adverse events for example in case something go wrong so on so far and the next is like to build full range of patient service around so to make sure that uh customers who like in reality the patients we have got enough care and services and for this uh a lot of uh, interesting capabilities would be applicable for example, to analyze severity of any um, events. Yeah. So, like, I see really strong fit of Salesforce capabilities we discussed into life science industry, into this molecular to market journey, because right now you can build all this journey within just one ecosystem. And it really helps us to operate huge volume of data within the ecosystem yeah the next and i would say the next pretty logical industry uh, we expect being extremely active next year yeah is healthcare yeah how to build all patient journey uh within complicated i would say nowadays healthcare landscape when you have clinics providers Players, a lot of uh, functions that are not part of one organization actually yeah they are part of multiple organizations but uh, for example patient care providers should build this journey for the patient without them feeling that like patient provider is not the clinic itself yeah so here again, we have huge capabilities of sales force for patient engagement. We have really strong capabilities for referral management, for working with HP uh, and practitioners, yeah, to engage them, to make sure that what we are building as a customer journey is correctly represented into every uh, doctor schedule. Yeah, into any clinic schedule. Uh, so these two activities should be really connected. Yeah, we should also add all insurance data on top uh, to make sure that like customers should not wait years to to get some approval from insurance company. Yeah, and for this uh, we, we have to build a lot of uh, integration capabilities uh, with. Uh, like EMR, EHR solutions, and it's really a huge layer of data management here. And of course, in those cases, uh, when it's like specific care needed, a huge community of care coordinators are also inbuilt into this solution. So we, yeah, here we are talking about really end-to-end -end solution. It's not a CRM, you see, anymore. Like we can't call it just a CRM. It's end-to-end -end solution, how to uh, build patient journey using all the Salesforce capabilities, starting from engaging patient by uh, care providers through all complicated process. And like we really right now can build this process within Salesforce and we, the professionals, have to make sure we know how to build it we can suggest best practices for doing this. The next industry we expect, like usually, if if any recessions, yeah, if any 
uh, crisis happens. CPG and retail, they will survive and they will be active. Yeah, the, the only what can change C C C CPG and retail can can search for new channels. Yeah, as we discussed, can can try to be smart, but they will be active on the market, and we should prepare ourselves to act within this industry. And again, like let's try to map those sales for capabilities of uh, the industry on industrial needs. Yeah, and here like four major pillars of this complete uh, solution to CPG and retail. Here we are talking about uh, lead to order process. Yeah, again, nothing, nothing extra new, engage customer. Uh, here, I would say pretty often you will use them in uh, marketing cloud, also mobile studio uh, to build in this direct communication with the customer. Uh, so like lead to order process, then CPQ, because in, in TPG and retail, it could be multiple and complicated, uh, and it will be multiple and complicated discounting uh, programs, like multiple types of offerings. Yeah, because like, as we mentioned, we should make this offerings really smart, but to make this offering smart, system should be capable to manage multiple time, multiple option of the software yeah, and here cpq is a perfect solution for us to 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 make it happen so full lead to order process effective with multi ordering and this smart suggestions inside of cpq is the major part of the solution then like second part this the cg cloud capabilities is retail execution because we still have to make sure that like products uh, are market correctly. Yeah, they are on the right place, on the right shelves, and customer see uh, your products. So as a result, this retail execution within CG Cloud capabilities are like new, not actually new, but relatively new and really powerful uh, Salesforce Cloud to complete this solution for CPG and retail. And of course, like on top of this, we should put omni-channel, we should put uh, B2C customer engagement and customer journey. And which is uh, last but not least on this slide, we have to build direct communication with the customer. So for the moment, it is really key driver of sales. And we should be able to provide our customers the solution for this direct communication. Uh, and when I told you uh, in the beginning of my speech that holders of the budget of the marketing department, I would say that this is exact place marketing department would like to invest. And it means for us as a professionals in the industry, we have to be able to support their desire and we have to be ready to propose right solution uh, for the industry. Next one, again, pretty logically, um, one of the biggest industry itself, yeah, it's manufacturing. Uh, and here, uh, for them, I would say it's one of the biggest challenges in their history. Because in the past, uh, a lot of manufacturers, they were not here about building a relationship with them customers. Like the previous way of working of manufacturers was to build strong uh, distributors or dealership ecosystem around and just to get rid of this uh, marketing headache, get rid of this direct sales headache uh, and be focused just on manufacturing. And what we see right now that every manufacturer starts investing in building a uh, direct relationship with their customers. This is extremely uh, valid channel for them because like, as I mentioned, yeah, employee, like create, try to create this traceability be be between uh, what is happening in industry and what is happening in IT. Uh, in industry, customer expect not only personalized offer, but pretty often even personalized production. 
yeah to make it happen we should uh, break these borders between manufacturers and then customers and this is the key task and key challenge of uh, manufacturers and uh, like for us it's a huge opportunity to be successful here for us it's a huge opportunity to help them to build this process again using the ecosystem we have right now uh, available. So here we are talking about order to cash process, e-com, the one of the like easiest way for, for manufacturers to start building this direct relationship with their uh, end customers without uh, B2B layer. Yeah. Uh, then of course they still, I would say still the margin, the major sales channel will be through partners and uh, partner major management are really a valuable part of the solution uh, but now we have to mix these two approaches within one solution and that is critical and to make it like happen and to make it in a really good way all power of analytics uh, and the uh, age time insights should be definitely built here and as usually, so the general statement nowadays, yeah, data is a fuel uh, for this. And Gini, like great uh, option how to deliver this fuel. So this is how this solution should look for, for manufacturers. Yeah, this is like major parts. Then uh, next one is... Uh, uh, communities in media. Uh, this is like another one industry uh, which is facing right now huge challenges and another one of industry which invests in a lot into their uh, transformation. I would say the core here, the core here is uh, BSS uh, transformation of for, for all media we are we are facing right now. Yeah, they like they should be on YouTube. They should be digital, almost no paper anymore. Uh, television like decreasing uh, popularity and as a result, uh, decreasing pro profit. So huge transformation of media should be supported uh, by us as IT professionals. We should know how to operate with huge number of data here because this is exactly what like we are calling big data it is here yeah and uh, we have to know how to build these capabilities and of course huge uh, layer of loyalty management uh, on top of this um, big data to monitor loyalty and since the marketing cloud we are able to do this yeah, and uh, this is what is needed and what is extremely required right now by uh, by this industry. And last one, but definitely not this one, is financial services. Financial services, again, uh, industry who historically invest a lot in IT. Right now, during recession, they definitely would try to be much more effective trend to be digital will be stronger and stronger. We see right now trend uh, to launch Uber banking, so banking as a services, for example, which require huge uh, IT landscape and capabilities. So like what is the key uh, unique factors in this industry? Yeah, it's uh, operating again with huge data but in same time really personalized offering banking is uh, industry uh, and insurance actually as well where we see extremely strong uh, desire to provide customers this personalized offering you check your bank account and see less than two thousand dollars on your bank account system immediately proposed to you like you need a credit solution. Yeah. So just in time delivery of right and effective offering here is a key. Yeah. You were not able to pay for some goods in the market. 
system immediately sent to your mobile device some, some proposal for this. This is what banking try to build right now. Yeah, this is the uh, what banking considering as a future because when markets are not growing, you cannot expect a uh, bigger number of operations in the market. It means like the, the less number of transactions you have, the less profitable you are. When overall number of transactions is decreasing, bank has to make sure that he is like that this bank is exact bank will be chosen by the customer to make those transactions. And this is core stone of the solution. So smart offering in same time, tons of integration with all banking and related APIs. Uh, you still have to be secure enough. You still have to work with your risks as a bank. Yeah, that is why all risk management and life checks capabilities also like easy to build on, on top of Salesforce capabilities is, yeah, mm, is very part of the solution. And of course, huge number of different uh, portals for partners because develop partner ecosystem uh, right now for banks is is is, uh, is really a must. So this is how our solution uh, looks for banking industries. So what I would like to highlight is outcomes. Yes, yeah, outcomes. I would like to highlight that we saw really complete Salesforce capabilities uh, and really complete Salesforce ecosystem. And Gini was really like the last stone, not the last one, but I mean, extremely valid stone into this ecosystem. And for us as a consultant and for us as an architect right now, our key skill is to be able to map industrial needs to this capabilities because as i mentioned it is not just a sales force yeah we uh, i mean it is just not just a crm we are offering solution to our customers and we have to be able to create the solution first of all in our head and then as a result to propose the solution to the customer so outcome number one we offer solution not just the crm software anymore yeah, uh, since everything should go smoothly, everything should be fast in the modern world, and all decisions inside of organization should be fast, all departments should work really in cooperation to each other. We, as the consultants and architects, should be able to help customers to break silos inside of their organization. This is like our next task here. Yeah. Next outcome, I really don't expect anymore to see just single cloud implementation. It could be a starter, but it is not full solution. So we should change our mind and be focused on multi-cloud multi -cloud implementations. We should know how to like take these pieces and create really strong solution from these pieces. And as I mentioned, key skill for us uh, right now is to know industry, to know ecosystem, and to be able to map needs of the industry on top of ecosystem. For this, we have to always keep in mind that solutions we are providing are 100% customer centric but with industrial specifics. So there is key trends uh, for the next year. This is key industries for the next year. And also I hope I, I shared with you vision how to cover needs of these industries. So thank you for your attention. Feel free to contact me anytime. And uh, I would really love to answer any question if it exists. And thanks once again for organization of great event wish you good luck uh like stay safe stay strong thank you